this is IBM Museum. And yet another unboxing. This is not real particular to IBM systems at all, um, but it was another set of drives uh, that I was expecting. And so I'll get turned around and get to where I can open those up. I've once again, of course, gone through and masked off any identifying information as far as addresses and tracking numbers and things like that. And this tape, the clear tape even acts like it's um, a little bit thicker than typical. Um, normally once you get, or just layered, or something because typically once you get under one level of the stuff it really it can just splits almost on its own sometimes and I guess that's maybe a, a reason to go through and layer it so the package stays together and then we have the original the uh Give me the additional um, paper that's folded over. That's and then this foil tape, and this is almost like a um, EMI shielding, almost. I mean, I'll bet that that is um, looks to be almost a full metallic. It's not gold. <laughs> and pretty good packaging arrangement here uh, in this uh, U.S. Postal Service box. And probably, I'll have to see if there's, and yeah, it's taped around. And this might even be comparable all right, well, no, that's a, uh, that's just a uh, CD-ROM drive, reads the CD, and the, all these are IDE, and um, they will likely, you know, that jumper block there is relatively where the white jumper is, is pretty standardized when you get to these AT, API drives of um, where they're set as master, slave, or cable select. And I'm looking for the identification if it had an embossing or a Let's see any identification of those jumpers. Oh, okay. So it's stamped. You sometimes see this in the course of the ring light. There's your audio connections on the end. Even a digital. And then the... Um, CS is cable select, M is master, uh, SL is slave, and then it has that IDE interface, and it's got the pin 1 and 2 up to 39 and 40 at the other end, and then your power. And I'll go through. Some of these are, are going to be a, a beige faceplate. And then some are black. Okay. So there's a light on. I mean, the, that's the brand, Light On. 
and um, still that for made in China and stuff like that. There's your back pins again and the embossing with the stamp metal showing what the pins are. But I mean, pretty good brands of drives for all that. And these are all optical drives. Okay, you had another Samsung. And I guess um, these had that volume control and headphone plug on the front. In addition, but looks just the same as that other model even set for that. I thought there were some beige faceplates in these, but okay. So then there is and there's the label designed by Toshiba Samsung Storage Technology. The dry model TS H552. And it's got that little bit better embossing there at the bottom. Say cable select and slave and master. Pretty standard. And looks like most of these are set to that cable select. And it's a it's a DVD ROM drive. Oh, DVD R R R W. And it's even the light scribe. So that does your CDRs as well. And I wanted something because this is a rewritable CD or CDR um, player, and and um, that has benefits. But I wanted. That's a um, that's a SATA drive that's in there, a SATA connected CD um, R drive, and I wanted a a drive that has the IDE IDE interface or that ATAPI interface, because this this planer does have a header on there, um, and it ultimately is where. Uh, I have pictures of that unit on video of the older drive I pulled out. And um, I swapped in that one because, and the, the older drive I pulled out was an IDE connected drive. There's a single header. Um, and I think I can get that with the way that IDE is, I can get this recognized under DOS with the right drivers so and then there is another light scribe and looks like all the same and this has got just a little bit more um not really dust or dirt it's just a I don't know if that's an oxidation or what. So there's effectively two of those so far. And then this is another, this is a rewritable. So this would be almost equivalent to what's in there if all the speed were correct. No volume controls on these. And headphone jacks on the front. Um, it does have that. I think that that I had to look. If that yeah, it looks um, standardized enough that that's where you straighten out paper clip in there to get the drive to eject. There's the back. All these are pretty standard fare as far as optical drives. 
on the IDE side of what was available out there. In fact, this would almost be, this would probably be maybe even identical. Looks like it has all the same markings. Um, this one actually does have the, well, the eject is in a different position. It'd be even kind of cool to pull that thing out of there and show these side by side and look at the, uh, the branding. There's a Sony. I mean, this would be the equivalent of what drive is in there, only it's the ID connection. And... That might even be that kind of more of a, just an equal straight across um, replacement. Doesn't necessarily have all the light scribe and everything else um, marking to it, but that might be a, a real good um, equivalent that I'd, that I'd go through and put in there. And then this is another just plain in fact, that's not even marked, and it's got a little, it's like a bird dropping or something, um, not even marked for that, another light on. And just plain CD-ROM drive. Yeah, I think I can put, since I kind of settled in pretty quick, I knew from the drive coming in that I'd, what I wanted to, um, to put in there. And these, these things, um, the cases and everything come open real easy. You pop the top, the blue latch, you slide to the front. And we spin that out. And of course, I'll have to have an IDE cable and I'll, I'll probably even strand it just so it's actually nice that that thing is right at the edge. It just slides down. Um, so let's look at side by side. the same depth to those look at that the front panel how similar those are in appearance really the only thing I mean there's just slight positional differences of like the LED eject hole in there is different placement on each of those and then we get to the back IDE on top you know it's got the settings and the and that's the other angle is the um, these did digital audio um, digital audio out, but going through and having uh, those connections for audio, um, that this is going to be, that's going to be the drive that I'll, that I'll swap in. And I don't know how quick I'll do that um, for all the the things I have going on coming up maybe when I get back you just drop it in a certain position have the connections there is either SATA old four pin Molex and uh, of course I've just got the the SATA connection of course the um, you know that's even a cable that I picked out and ran and 
It's not a uh, an original, and it's a long it's a long little cable in there. It has to be of um, get everything. I'll get the drive that I had in there all plugged in. I just down. You move the slat the slides of blue latches. They're just off the screen. There's one just like that over here too. And close the lid and that system is ready to go. That drive is held in the right placement. But we found our, our drive that I'll put in there. So that's kind of, that's kind of neat. I won't use those light scribes that I'd, that's what I'd saw when uh, the listing of the the uh, drives I was kind of interested because I knew that those were that with the white markings on those that those would be the uh, the DVD side and I don't know what the light scribe will really offer in addition to uh, what I want I just mainly want to get that IDE connection so with drivers I can go through and get it recognized in DOS and I could put a SCSI drive in there, and I, I mean, I have the SCSI adapter right in there. It's got an internal connection, has ways to do that. Uh, but SCSI drives, it'd be a challenge for me to find um, one that's a black front on it, drive bezel, and um, also for all that, it, I mean, I could set up the drivers and it's visible under DOS and things like that, but it's it's just not going to have that CDR capability. It's going to be just a straight CD-ROM drive. So I think I did a pretty good selection. And there's lots of places. I mean, there's these optical drives are not used on systems anymore. And I've seen a lot of them on surplus, and it's uh, finally an opportunity to, to uh, do updates on some of these machines. If you had an older CD-ROM drive, when you can replace it on there with a newer system. So... Uh, interesting times that we live in. But if you enjoyed the video, click on that like button, please, and subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. But this is IBM Museum. That's all I have for now. Thank you.